I'm Parvez Hudbai. I teach physics and mathematics at Foreman Christian College here in Lahore. I was earlier for 40 years at Qaid Azam University in Islamabad and still am sort of over there. Okay, uh, why is the use of rationality ignored and subsided in our national debates? Pakistan is a country that was founded in the name of Islam and it was founded at a time when passions were very high. It has over time become more religious and when you become more religious then reason and rationality are uh, then given a lesser place. We have seen a distinct change in how people think over the last 30 years or so. And I would ascribe this to the change in the school curriculum, to the fact that religion has obtained centrality in our daily lives. And that means that the voice of reason has become less and it's become subdued and uh, these are dangerous times for us. Okay, uh, how do you think the field of science is progressing in Pakistan? I would say that there are fields of science that once existed and did rather well but now are at the danger and now are at the point of becoming extinct. Theoretical physics in particular has almost died out, so has mathematics. This doesn't mean that there are no institutes or universities or professors publishing papers. There are lots and lots of papers and lots of, lot of PhDs being produced. And yet, I would say that in terms of quality, in terms of uh, uh, knowledge, these are severely deficient. I feel that science is under threat in Pakistan. And that threat is that it's not being taught the way it should be. The level of competence has vastly decreased, but also that pseudoscience has, uh, is now progressing at an astonishing speed. And to mm. give you just a couple of examples, there was uh, this man who claimed that he could run all cars just on plain water. Now, the whole country was taken in by that. So the ministers in the government, the top scientists in all our universities, and even the great Dr. A.Q. Khan and the great Dr. Samar Mubarakman went gaga over this man who said that uh, I will run all this just on plain water, no petrol, no gas, no oil, nothing. And to give you a second example, here we have in our most uh, well-known university, the Lahore University of Management Sciences School of Science and Engineering, the head of the biology department who says that by reciting Surah Rahman, that is to say a verse from the Quran, I, you can get your cancer cured because new genes are created by listening to that holy verse and so in every hospital there should be separate rooms where this holy verse can be heard. This man is still the head of the biology department in spite of the fact that uh, well I've tried to tell people and the world and all of Pakistan on television, through the newspapers, that such is, that this is nonsense. Okay, do you expect another Dr. Abdus Salam to be born in these lands? Dr. Abdus Salam, who got the Nobel Prize for Physics, was an anomaly. He was born prior to partition. He uh, was Pakistani in the sense that he was born in its geographical uh, boundaries but he really didn't owe to Pakistan he was a natural genius just like the great mathematician Ramanujan was a genius and there's so, so many prodigies who uh, then go on to flower he was one of them so I think that because this is a question of 
random uh, genes of uh, some people just having extraordinary mental abilities, mathematical abilities, that of course this can happen, why not? After all, it's the same gene pool. And uh, there are very, very bright people, and there will be in the future too, but uh, these people will make it somehow, if they are lucky, that is. And if they're not, then you will never hear of them. Did we do justice to Abdus Salam's name? Abdus Salam is a man who is honored across the world. In fact, when I was at uh, the European Nuclear Research Laboratory, CERN, I saw a street named after him over there. In the universities in the United States where I've been, there are computers that are named after Abdus Salam. His name dominates physics. And yet, if you were to ask one of my students, you know, like the guys who are playing uh, out over there and looking from my window, hardly any of them will have heard of Salam. That's because they are told that the great scientist of Pakistan is Dr. A.Q. Khan, our bomb hero. It's very tragic, but that's what religious prejudice does. It uh, distorts your vision. It uh, lets pygmies and uh, ignoramuses rise to the level of scientific heroes. I mean, can you imagine that a great scientist would ever say that you can have a car that runs on water? Well, Eq Khan did, but he's recognized, Salam is not. Uh, do you have any uh, good expectations from the youth of Pakistan? The youth of Pakistan worries me because they have been subjected to um, the crippling effect of education. I would much rather that the majority of Pakistanis be uneducated rather than miseducated. Now that means that there are enormous dangers that lie ahead and therefore we have to do something that will change this. To my mind there should be an international outcry against the kind of hatreds that we are teaching in Pakistani schools today. To give you an example, in uh, the KPK province, there is a new chapter that has been inserted in the school textbooks, and this is in Imran Khan's government, where children are asked to learn about Ghazi Alam Deen. He was the man who killed a blasphemer. And these, this chapter glorifies him. So in effect, we're producing young children with minds bent upon murder. That has to change. And in the end, would you like to send any message to our viewers? Well, the fight for reason and rationality is not something that you and I are going to win. In our, li in our lifetimes. Nevertheless, it's a fight that simply cannot be given up because there will be generations after ours. And no matter how bad things look right now, I am convinced that in the long run, we will win. Why? Because there are historical precedents. After all, this age is certainly not as bad as the Dark Ages of Europe. They came out of that. Well, our fight is tougher in a way because uh, we are dealing with a very deeply in entrenched thought, ideology, and it's one that claims to be divine. But um, in the end, in the end, humans are rational, and in the end, we will make a better world.